there have been times in history where Christians have looked around and they've said, oh, nuts, like, where's the church? Like, uh, where, where are the genuine Christians? Um, who, who's left? Uh, well, that, this has happened in, in biblical history before. Uh, Romans 11, verse 3 quotes Elijah, who says, Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. And I alone, alone am, am left and they seek my life. Paul says, but what is God's reply to him? Quote, I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal, to Baal. So too at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. So note two things there in Romans 11. There's always a remnant chosen by grace. And if it's based on grace, it can't be based on works. Uh, this is something that gives God the glory. Um, secondly, I just would want to glory in the person of Jesus by way of contrast here. Um, you know, on, on the negative side, Mormonism says that Jesus essentially uh, failed at establishing a kingdom that was perpetual in the first century. Uh, it, he planted a church that was ultimately destroyed. He gave a word that was insufficient to authorize. Mormonism has given us um, a final dispensation head that isn't Jesus. I'm not sure if people know that, but the final dispensation head and the final dispensation in Mormonism is headed by Joseph Smith. Uh, he's the he's the head of the last and final greatest dispensation. Um, Mormonism uh, has not given us any guarantees that its scripture won't be rescinded or retrofitted. Its book of commandments was retrofitted. Lectures on faith was rescinded, taken out of the Mormon canon. Uh, Mormonism has given us temples built with human hands. Uh, it's given us a temple veil put back up. Uh, it's given us high priests that are not final. It's I, And if, if you'll consider this, please, Mormonism is refusing to obey the apostolic commands for how to do New Testament church life and leadership. Look at 1 Timothy and Titus and how they, they do church leadership. And modern day prophets and apostles in Mormonism they say they have impressions, but they can neither confirm nor deny that they have literally seen the risen Christ. And so I would just say to glory in Christ by way of contrast here, Jesus got it right the first time. His apostles that he ordained, that he chose for himself in the first century, they were protected from teaching heresy. Mormons can't say that about their own prophets, um, especially informed Mormons. They find plenty of examples where Latter-day Saint prophets and apostles have taught gross falsehood, even from the conference pulpit, later denounced as heresy by subsequent leaders. Whereas in the Bible, someone like Samuel, a prophet, it says the Bible says that none of his words fell to the ground as the Lord was raising him up as a prophet. Well, Jesus, he chose apostles for himself and and he protected them from teaching heresy. And they actually saw the risen Christ. They met the criteria of Acts of Acts chapter one, Jesus laid a durable foundation, a durable foundation through his apostles with the written words and teachings of his apostles. He's given us scripture that is living and active and preserved. He's given us a kingdom that can't be shaken or uprooted. He's given us a word that is sufficient to authorize what it commands. Christ has torn the veil of the temple in two. It says, in the Bible that when Christ was on the cross, the veil was torn in half and Christ has built a temple in heaven, not built with human hands. And someday that will temp that temple will descend to earth. And he has preserved his church through mass apostasy, through mass persecution, through suffering and confusion, much worse than we've ever seen in America. Uh, the church has been preserved in far worse circumstances. Um, if Christ can grow his kingdom through a mustard seed, if he can he, if he can encourage Elijah with a remnant chosen by grace and preserved, surely he can preserve his church with his word and the apostolic foundation of the teachings of the apostles for 2,000 years after Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, has established and inaugurated this secure covenant, this promise to gather a people for himself and to preserve them and keep them in the Father's hand as a good shepherd protecting his sheep, what a savior, what a savior. Joseph Smith is boring compared to this. He is not impressive. Um, when Joseph Smith in one of his final sermons boasted of having had uh, disciples 
that did not run away from him in contrast to Jesus. He's essentially, if you can search this up on the web, Jesus, uh, Joseph Smith boasted of having done a better job than Jesus at keeping the church together. This is especially offensive to Christians who cherish the promises and the, the finality of the work of Jesus Christ in gathering a people and providing for them uh, an atonement. Anyway, I'll, I'd go on till two in the morning about this. I love this stuff so much. Jesus is enough. He's sufficient. He is able. He's capable. He's omnipotent. He is all wise to keep a church together, preserved and protected. 